hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm going to be giving you part 50 of what if kurama gave naruto a dojutsu remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and also go ahead and check out a new episode of what if Sunavi was naruto's mother and enjoy and also stay in tune because over anime king 2 i'm going to be giving you a new episode of what if naruto joined the akaski and also a new episode of what if naruto had 9k yenkai so stay in tune for that as well and if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice and seeing my videos and you enjoy them go ahead and click that red subscribe button on both channels i'll be leaving a link at the top of the description over here for you guys to check out anime king 2 go over there and click that red subscribe button and become part of the channel and thank you all for your help and your support and also comment down below and tell me if you're new or i'll be replying and talking back to all of you so yeah guys without further ado let's get straight into this new episode so a lot of things happened in the last part naruto and fu and kushina came back from ozo as they arrived naruto immediately dispelled his clones as he got all of the information he then let kushina and the kayubi and Kome went to the analyst department to check out the theories on the sword as the swords were rare and Kushina wanted to know more about it also Kiba and Haku went on a mission to gather information where they met up on Kurasaki and then they met up on Kimimaru and Tewaya as they all headed into the cave as they met up on Kobayashi, Kiba's father as Kiba was pissed as he rushed towards him but Kiba was no match for Kobayashi as Teiwaya stated that Kobayashi is far powerful than her or Kimimaru so they all decided to attack him and he told his dog to stay behind he then let his body be engulfed by the curse mark also with Orochimaru he has finally perfected the part for the curse mark level 3 as he was going to test it on Kobayashi and if he survives he is going to become more powerful than he is now when we go back to Kiba and the rest of them, all of them are on the floor as Kobayashi had transformed, making all of them scared as he was much stronger than them. So yeah guys, that was basically the last part we left off. You guys can switch across the playlist and check it out for yourself. So let's start this new episode. After Kobayashi erased his cursed seal from his face, all of them were on the ground panting. Ayaka then came up to Kobayashi. Was it really necessary for you to enter? Stage 2 of the curse mark. Look at them, she said, while Kobayashi just scratched his ears. I expected more from my son, but I guess being raised by Tasumi, I should expect that. As Kiba heard, he tightened his fist. The curse mark that Kobayashi possessed, it was different from what Seikon or any of those guys had, Kiba thought. It was weird. And its power was weird and evil. Oh, he looks like he still has some fight inside of him. That's it, said Kobayashi, as Kiba got to his feet. As Kiba huffed, as all of them were fighting, no one expect for Kimimaru and Tewaya. Manish get a hit on Kobayashi, but those hits did nothing to him. He wasn't even using Ayaka in the fight yet. It pissed Kiba off that his father was taking him so lightly. Akamaru then stood to his feet. Akamaru. Are you with me? Kiba asked. As Akamaru barked, Kiba then went into his pouch as he took out a soldier pill and gave one to Akamaru. Akamaru's fur then changed from white to red as Kiba became more animalistic. Everyone said Kiba, I want you to get out of here. This will drain my chakra, but I can tear him apart with this. Everyone simply nodded as they sunshine out of sight. As Kiba, Akamaru and Kobayashi and Ayaka was the only one left in the room. Well, show me what you got, son, said Kobayashi as Kiba closed his eyes. Akamaru then jumped on his head as Kiba smiled. I have you to thank for this, Naruto, he said. Shadow clone Jutsu. Kiba then made six clones of himself and six Akamaru as well on their heads. As Kobayashi then clapped. Not bad, but that won't be enough to stop me. Kiba then smirked. That's what you think. 
Kiba then slabbed his hand together as there was a large poof from all of them as all of them turned into two headed beasts as there was now six of them. I'll rip you to shred with this. Multiple Wolf Fang, Thunder Fang, as they all started spinning violently, tearing up the place as Kobayashi narrowed his eyes. Not bad, that would actually hurt. It might even kill me if I was in the middle of it. Outstanding, but Kobayashi then turned to Ayaka as she nodded as the both of them quickly charged inside. Back outside, everyone watch as the surface was destroyed as Kiba was sent flying out as his clones poofed away as he returned back to normal as Kobayashi had a few scratch over him. Well, that was certainly impressive. I got a bit scared there, but you're too out of control as he then grabbed Kiba by the shoulder and lift him up. Everyone was too injured to help. Well son, any last words? Kobayashi asked as Kiba growled and spit on him. As the spit catch him on his cheek as his father just chuckled. Arrogant, all the way to the end. He then shake his head. No, said Haku as she put her hands together and created a seal for the Harishin, a distress call to Naruto. Back at Konoha, Naruto laughed as he walked with Kurnai, Anko and Shizune. He then immediately felt one of his chakra seals spike. He then closed his eyes as he gasped. Haku is in danger, Naruto said, as he then vanished. As the girls saw that he just disappeared. Back with Kobayashi, he brought his hand down in a motion to stab Kiba right in the chest with his extended claws. But there was a spark of lightning as Naruto appeared behind him. Ayaka narrowed her eyes as she looked at Naruto. As Naruto took in the situation, a Rasengan form in his right hand. Put him down! Rasengan! Naruto yelled as he slammed the Rasengan into Kobayashi's back. As Kobayashi was sent flying into the trees. As Kiba dropped to the ground as he looked at Naruto. As Naruto leaned down. Hey man. You've seen better days, Naruto told him. As Kiba chuckled, You know, I had it under control, said Kiba. As Naruto rolled his eyes, Sure you did. Kobayashi then appeared again, as both him and Naruto glared at each other, as Ayaka then growled at Naruto and rushed at him. She tried to bite him, but Naruto merely sidestepped her, as he planted his foot into her stomach, kicking her towards Kobayashi. Naruto then started to remember Kobayashi's face, as he started to get pissed as he knew him. Kobayashi Inuzaka, am I right? Naruto asked, glaring at the man. While Kobayashi noticed the blonde hair and the whisker marks. So you're the brat that is now Tasumi's mate. How nice. Today is a day that I get to kill you. Naruto then looked back down at Kiba who passed out. As he then turned to see the rest of his friends with a girl that he didn't know. Did you do this? Naruto asked. As Kobayashi smiled. So what if I did? What are you going to do? He asked. As Kobayashi then felt the key in the ear start to get thick, making it a bit hard for him to breathe. As a killer intent was leaking from Naruto. As Naruto locked his eye for a few seconds, when he snapped them back open, in one eye, he had the eternal Mangeta Sharingan, and in the other, he had his Shinsei Nagan. Kobayashi growled as Haku pulled Kiba to the side, as Haku then tried to tend to everyone's wounds. Naruto then ran through Hansen as he gripped his right hand with his left hand, as it started cackling with lightning. I'm going to make you pay for the hell that you put Tasumi, Kiba, and Hana through. Bring it, brat. I wanted to kill you for a long time now, so come at me. As Kobayashi here grew more feral, as his claws and his fangs started to grow, as Ayaka jumped to the sidelines to watch the fight before intervening. As the both of them rushed forward, Shidori Naruto said, as Kobayashi dodged with impressive speed as he flipped back and threw a shuriken towards Naruto. 
Naruto threw a shuriken of his own, knocking away Kobayashi, as he then threw a kunai towards Kobayashi, as lightning was cackling off of it. The kunai grazed Kobayashi by the cheek as he moved his head, as a little bit of blood started to run down his cheek. As he licked his blood and smiled, Well, you're not weak, kid, I'll give you that, but I'm just getting warmed up, Kobayashi said. Naruto Mangetu and Shinsei Nagan start to flare as Naruto concentrates on Kobayashi. As Naruto then said Amaterasu as Kobayashi tried to jump out of the way, but the Amaterasu caught him on his left leg. But it wasn't the black flames, it was pure white, as Naruto didn't understand it. What is this Amaterasu? I feel like I can control it skillfully, but when did I get this ability? It must be the change of my Mangeta Sharingan. As everyone was amazed how Naruto was staying on par with Kobayashi when he defeated them so easily. But the white flames didn't stay forever. They just burned Kobayashi at an intense rate and then they went away as Kobayashi held his foot in pure pain. As he slowly got up back, you bastard he said, I'll make sure you die today. As he rushed at Naruto, as he came in for a punch. But a sand shield came up and blocked his attack. Sand spears, said Naruto. As sand spears started to fly towards Kobayashi, who had to flip back, as a lot of them grazed him and hit him, causing him a lot of pain. Naruto then jumped up into the air. Dance of large, he said, as he then shot bones from his body towards Kobayashi. As Kobayashi tried to dodge them all, but a lot of them grazed him as he flipped back as Naruto stopped the attack. Kobayashi, stop playing with him and kill him already, said Ayaka. You shouldn't have a problem taking down this brat. But before Kobayashi could respond, Naruto appeared in front of him as he clawed back his fist with chakra charging in it. This that he stole from Tsunade as he slammed it into Kobayashi's face, sending Kobayashi spiraling back as he slammed through about four trees. Naruto then looked down at his hand. The chakra control for Snade's strength is a bit off, he said. That wasn't 100% hit. Kobayashi slowly got out of the rumbles as he spat out blood out of his mouth as he rubbed his jaw. Damn, I must say, you're the first person to ever hit me that hard. Kobayashi then jumped up into the air. Fang piercing tornado as he started to spin. As he came towards Naruto like a tornado, trying to pierce right through him. Sky sand defensive wall, said Naruto, as he created a large wall of sand. As Naruto used it to protect everyone, Naruto then held out his hand as a Rasengan form. As he then ran through hand sand with his other one hand. Fire release, fire stream, as he blew the fire into the Rasengan, turning it dark red. He then started to add lightning nature the ball of chakra. The lightning flare around the Rasengan, making it more powerful and dangerous as Kobayashi, whose attack was stopped by the sand, noticed it. Naruto then jumped into the air as he yelled, flaming thunder spear, as Kobayashi spin in the tornado form, as Naruto slammed his flaming thunder spear right in the center, as Ayaka went behind a tree and covered her eyes. What's going on? Kurasaki asked. But no one could say anything as they waited for the explosion to die down. The wall of sand died down as everyone waited to see. As they saw Kobayashi huffing and Naruto doing the same, the two glared at each other as the curse mark started to extend over Kobayashi's body. While Naruto's body leaked out red chakra, the curse mark then stopped on Kobayashi as he was forcing something back. No, not yet. You're lucky brat, I'm going to let you live, but a word of warning, stay away from Tasumi or I won't be responsible for what happened to her. If you touch Tasumi, I'll kill you, said Naruto in a dark tone, as Kobayashi just nodded with a smile. Come on Ayaka, it's time to go. Oh, and Kiba, he said, try to get better, you really need to man up if you can, as him and Ayaka vanish. Everyone waited for a few minutes as they couldn't sense Kobayashi anymore as they let out a sigh of relief. Man, it was touch and go from here. 
Thanks for the assist, Naruto, Kiba said. As Naruto gave him a small smile, don't worry about it, Kiba. I can't have you kick the bucket just yet. Who knows what Tasumi or Hana would do to me? Naruto joke. As Kiba rolled his eyes, as Teiwaya then walk over and jab Naruto in the shoulder. Nothing serious, just a bit playful. You know I could have taken that guy. You didn't have to interfere, she said. Oh, I have no doubt that you could. But for now, you all can relax now, Naruto said. As Kiba watched, Kurasaki leave. What about you? I thought that you wanted to kill us, Kiba said. As everyone turned and looked at Kurasaki, as she stopped. Shut up. Can't you see I'm tired, she said, as everyone took a glance at her clothes and the state that she was in, as she saw everyone staring at her, as she blushed a bit and turned around. Besides, you sort of saved me, so I guess I'll let you go. Just get out of here. Kiba chuckled as he got up. I knew that you weren't a bad person. No one as cute as you could be that bad, he said. As Naruto looked at Kurasuke to see her blushing like crazy, Shut up and go, she said, as she didn't look back because she didn't want anyone to see her blush. Alright, see you later, Kurasaki, said Kiba, as all of them placed a hand on her shoulder as they vanish. Why is that guy getting to me, she said to herself. Well, I guess I have to report this to the old man. Back with Naruto, the blonde and the group fell in the road of Konoha where Shizune, Anko and Kurenai stood. The three women gasped as they the civilians were around as they saw they appear out of thin air. Naruto got to his feet quickly as he rubbed the back of his head. Shizune, please inform the medical staff that they are going to have some visitors. She nodded as she ran off as Kurenai and Anko helped everyone to their feet. What happened to you guys? Anko asked as Naruto waved it off with a smile on his face. I'll tell you later, but for now, I have to go to the archives, but a change of clothes. As he went home to change, meanwhile, Shizune escorted the medical team to help them. With Fu, Kasume and Yujito, the three of them had marked the cave with the strange crystals inside so they could guide their way back there. They spotted the hole that they fell through and figured that they were still somewhere on the Namikaze grounds. Alright, so which way should we go? Kasume asked. As Fu scratched her cheek, this is confusing, there should be an easy way to do this, as Yujito then gasped. I know what to do, she said, as she pulled out a kunai and tie some ninja wire on it, as she threw it out of the hole. As it stabbed into a tree, she tugged on it to make sure that it was in properly. There, now let's go, as they all crawled out of the hole. How long were we down there? asked Fu. About two or three hours, said Kasumi. Fu's stomach then grumbled as Yujito and Kasumi looked at her and giggled as the both of their stomach did as well. Maybe we should all get something to eat, Kasumi said as the both of them nodded. So what are we going to eat, Yujito asked as a big smile appeared on Kasumi's face. The best thing, of course. Ramen, she shouted. Back at Konoha archive, Naruto walked up to Konoha's archive with Kurunai and Anko as he told them the story on the way here. So Kobayashi is with Orochimaru. I always knew that he was an ass, but that is just downright low, said Anko, as Naruto nodded. Still, I am amazed that you didn't chase after him, Naruto, said Kurunai. Well, I wanted to, but I realized that the others needed help. Well, if I ever see him, I'll kick his ass, said Anko. As Naruto chuckled, as Kurenai just shake her head. You know, said Naruto, you too should get ready for tonight. And why is that, Kurenai asks. Did you remember our deal, Naruto asks. As Kurenai thought about it, as she remembered their deal, to go on a date with the both of them. As she looked at Naruto, yes, said Naruto, I would love to see the both of you, lovely ladies tonight. As Kurenai shook her head and looked at uncle, well, I can't wait for it, Naruto, said Anko with a smirk. As they arrived to their destination and saw Inoichi and Shibi standing there. So, it is your turn to guard the archives, huh? Naruto asked. It's sort of a boring job. But we get it done, said Inoichi. 
as Shibi fold his hands. It's for the best, Inoichi, said Shibi. So what brings you here today, Naruto, Inoichi asked. As he called him Naruto because he know that Naruto don't like the formality, like Hokage and all that. I need to get inside for a little bit, along with Kuronai and Uncle. The both of them nodded as they opened the door. There was a yell as they all turned to see Sasuke rushing towards them as Naruto sighed. Hey loser, I told you I wouldn't let you out of my sight, said Sasuke as he knew each in Naruto's eyes. Uchiha showed the Hokage some respect, he said. As Naruto just sighed, it's alright guys. But Sasuke is like that. I just learned how to deal with it. Alright Sasuke, come on then. You will be following me into the archives, but you will help with me also with my research that I need done. Understood? As Sasuke nodded, they then heard another yell, Sasuke, as they turned to see Sakura. Naruto then turned to Inoichi and Shibi. Don't let that girl in here, he said, as Sasuke had a proud smile on his face as they walked in. As the two guards then stood right at the door. I have to go in there, said Sakura. No, you cannot, said Shibi. Why? Because the Hokage said so, as Inoichi turned at her. Fine then. I'll just wait until they're out as she walked off cursing Naruto in her mind. Remind me why that Naruto doesn't just kick her out of the shinobi program? That girl is not worthy enough to be a shinobi, said Shibi. Because it would be abuse of power and we both know that Naruto isn't like that, said Inoichi. Inside of the archives, Naruto, Anko and Kurnai and Sasuke enter the large room Inside here was ever record our past actions that happened since the founding of the village. Man, this is such a lot of things to cover in the short time that I need. Alright, I'll tell you three, said Naruto as he turned around. We're going to be searching through the records of any natural disaster in Konoha. As the three of them raised their eyebrows. It is something that needs to be done for the Crip Analysis Division. It's sort of a small project I need to get done. I'll make sure that this doesn't take long. And who knows Sasuke, you might find something interesting in here also. But you will tell me of all the things you find, just as a precaution. Got it? Naruto asks. As Sasuke sighed. Yeah, got it, he said. Alright you three, let's get to work. We have a lot of ground to cover. Back at the Crip Analysis Department. Kushina, the Kayubi and the Nadabi. We're still helping Shio, Shikaku with the swords as Yujiu then came into the room as Shikaku called her for some help, seeing that she was almost an expert on swords. What's the matter? Yujiu asked as Kushina held up a sword. Yujiu quickly noticed a unique design. Where did you get Naruto's swords? Yujiu asked as Kushina set it down. He told us to investigate them. I want a second opinion. Being a Kenjutsu master myself, tell me what can you derive from these swords? Kushina asked as Yujiu shook her head. Naruto had me looking at them a few weeks ago during the Hokage placement test. I told him that they were really strong and very special, even more special than any Anvu sword could be. I told him that they looked to be made from a master who knew what he was doing. Those were made to be perfect in every sense of the word. As Kushina then sighed, so no real given information, she said. Kushina then looked at the symbol. As she thought about it, a swirl has multiple meanings, but since we're talking about the past, then I think I know. A swirl was the mystery of the water in those times. Mito once told me that the same people are ever changing, just like the swirling in the water. I think that is what she meant, the swirl represent change. As Kushina smiled that she was right, everyone then looked at the swirl. Alright then, as they turned to the star. So, the star is shining in the darkness and the swirl means change? This sounds like a prophecy, said Shikaku, as everyone agreed with him on that. Alright then, we figure out those two. So what does the square mean? Shio asks as Nadabi narrow her eyes at the small box. Hmm? 
Wait a second, she said as she got closer, as the Kayubi walked up to it as well. As the two of them squinted their eyes before they gasped, Oh no, this is bad, very very bad, the both of them thought at the same time. With Itachi and Kisame, Hurry up Kisame, we're going to Konoha for the Kayubi Jinjolki. As Kisame was confused, as they didn't get any missions to go after him, this was going against the leader's order. Itachi then stopped as he turned and looked at Kisame. It is not something that I'm doing on a whim. However, this needs to be done. But train lightly, Kisame. You remember how strong Kushina is and what she did to you the last time. As Kisame looked down at his chest as he had a scar. When I see her again, I'm going to let Samihata eat her, he said. Very well then, let's go Kisame, Itachi told him as the both of them shot off. Back at the stone village in the night, Kurasaki finished giving her report and Oniki wasn't sure how to feel. He was happy that his granddaughter was safe, but what was Konoha doing so near the border? Along with the Fortokage son, nonetheless. Are you sure that is all that happened? Onki asked as Kurasaki nodded with a sigh. She was really tired. Yes, it was. But can I ask you something? She said. As he nodded. Well, old man, not saying that I can or will forgive him. But do you think it's right to hate the Fortokage son? Kurasaki asked as Onki stopped what he was doing as he looked up at her. I just mean, it's not his fault, it's his father. And plus, if we try to kill him, what would that accomplish? Do you really think that he will get back at the Fort Okage for killing his son? I don't think that you can get back at someone who is already dead, Kurasaki said. Where did this come from? You're not starting to like Konoha, are you? Kurasaki slammed the table. Of course not. Why would I start to like Konoha? Or that idiot with a dog on his head. She then turned around and scoffed. What are you talking about, boy with the dog on his head? Onki asked. Don't ask me, she said, as she walked out and slammed the door. As Oniki just shook his head. As he then looked through the window. She's kind of right. He then went back to his work. Back with Naruto, on the tables were a lot of scrolls, as many clones of Naruto were around the room. Anko and Kuranai were scanning the scrolls. And also Sasuke was doing the same. He rather go and train. But Naruto told him that he will see Itachi if he's with him. So he wanted to see Itachi. Man, nothing in this one. Forget it. This place is a boring village. No natural disaster has happened here since. As he then stopped. As he read through a scroll. I think I have it, said Sasuke. As Naruto dispelled his clones. As Kurnai and Anko walk over to him, as Sasuke handed Naruto the scroll, as Naruto immediately opened it, as it read, This year Konoha witnessed a deadly natural disaster, firestorm, rage through the year. The time was of the age of Tobirama Senju. The fire almost decimated the village and was called the Great Fire of Konoha. It burned through the village for three days. Thousands of lives were lost. It was thanks to the effort of Tobirama Senju that the fire died down. No one knew what caused the fire. It was stated to be natural. To this day, we all have a fear that the fire will return and destroy the village. So, this is it, Naruto thought. Naruto then told him that this was what he was looking for as he thanked the three of them and said that it would be all for today. But there's somewhere that he has to be, as he harishing away as Sasuke sighed. Naruto then went to the hospital as he checked up on Haku to make sure that she was okay. He was about to check up on Kiba, but he saw Ino and Tenten fighting over which one of them get the cure for him. As Kiba saw Naruto through the window, as he had a tired expression on his face, as Naruto just sighed. As Kiba just looked down at the two girls who were arguing at the moment. Help me out, Kiba mouthed the words. No, said Naruto. Girl problems, that's all on you. I'm not going to get caught up in that one. 
as Kiba growled at him as Naruto went off. Naruto then saw Kimimaru and Teiwaya sleeping as the both of them lost a huge gap in power from losing the curse mark so he will have to train the both of them as well. He was about to leave when he was pulled to the side by Tasumi and Hana as the both of them had a serious expression on their face. Naruto, please don't lie to me. Did you and Kiba meet Kobayashi today? Tasumi asked as Naruto narrowed his eyes. He then turned to Hana and saw that she was serious as well. Yeah, I did. Kiba and Haku met him unexpectedly near to one of Orochimaru's bases. As far as I know, he was too strong for them and he nearly killed them, said Naruto. As Tasumi gritted her teeth, she almost lost her son to his own father. But don't worry, Tatsumi, said Naruto. I will deal with him from now on. No, you're not. That's my job. I should have done it a long time ago, but Kobayashi will be handled by me. This is my fight, she said, as she turned to leave. No, said Naruto. As Tatsumi stopped, I am not going to lose you or Hana to anyone. I said that I'll take care of it, Naruto said. Naruto, this is an Inuzaka matter. I cannot let you interfere in my business, Tatsumi said, as Naruto widened his eyes, as she turned and started to walk away, as Naruto bit his lip as he didn't want to say this. Tatsumi, as your Hokage, I order you to stand down and let me deal with it, Naruto yelled, making Hana gasp as Tatsumi stopped, as Naruto turned his head. Yes, Hokage, said Tatsumi, as Naruto turned back and looked at her. As she then walked off, as Naruto lowered his head, he then felt a hand on his shoulder. As he turned around to see Hana with a small smile, Naruto, don't feel bad about it. Mom is reckless when it comes to dad. She just doesn't want you to get caught up in something that she wants to deal with, Hana said. As she went to catch up with her mother, their first fight, Hana thought, as Tasumi walked off, as Naruto rubbed the back of his head and sighed. Back with Kobayashi, he arrived to Orchmar's base as he sat down, as the both of them looked at him to see that he was in a good mood. What are you so happy about, Kabuta asked, as Kobayashi smirked. I fought that brat today, and he's quite good, but I know that he's holding back a lot, but if I had gone with the second stage he would have died. It would be wise to not underestimate him, Kobayashi, said Orchimaru. Now, let us make it certain that you can kill him, Kabuto the vile Orchimaru said. As Kabuto handed Orchimaru a vial, come here Kobayashi, said Orchimaru. This will give you the third and most improved stage, as Kobayashi smirked when he heard that. But guys, let me end this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. Remember to share to all of your friends on your social media platform and also stay in tune because over at Anime King 2 I'm going to be posting a new episode of What If Naruto Joined the Akatsuki and also a new episode of What If Naruto Had 9 Keki Genkai so stay in tune for that and enjoy and go ahead and check out What If Tsunade Was Naruto's Mother I post a new episode of that and remember guys if you're new and this is the first time hearing my voice go ahead and click that red subscribe button and join the anime king too and the anime king family guys and thank you for all of your help and your support and without further ado i'm out for now peace